I'm Paul Taft. I'm an instructor for phlebotomy. Now, I've had a very difficult time locating a good video on YouTube or anything else on how to draw blood. So I thought I'd make one using one of our students. So we're going to follow Mariah around the lab as she navigates and does the blood draw perfectly from step by step all the way through, just like you see in a textbook. Some of these things you're going to implement in your own practice when you get out there. Very good skills to know. Regardless, this is going to be probably one of the best blood draws you've seen. And this is a student named Mariah. So let's get to it. you. First off, I'll start off by asking you a few questions. Can you verify your name? Go ahead and tell me your first name, please. Okay, Curtis, and can you spell your last name? Thank you so much, Mr. Barnes. Can you verify your date of birth? Perfect. Do you have any adverse reactions to bandages, alcohol? Have you had any adverse reactions while drawing your blood? Perfect. And which arm do you prefer? This is one of my favorite questions. The patient is going to give you one of two answers. The first answer they're going to say is, oh, you have to go right here because every time they try, they miss every other place and you have to go. This is the only spot that they've ever been able to get me at, which is very limiting. You have to go in that spot. Otherwise, they're going to say you can go in any arm you want to. That's the best answer. That means you can apply the tourniquet and palpate any arm in any vein, and it is up to you to use your best skill to find the right vein. These answers also help you determine whether the patient has had good or bad experiences having their blood drawn in the past. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and wash my hands before I get your supplies. All right, so now we're going to be taking a look at the requisition. We can see we have a stat order checked off in the top left here. Most of these tests are chemistry. We have a serum hepatic panel, a basic metabolic panel, and a glucose. But we also have a CBC for our hematology and a PTT for our coagulation department. So we have a stat, and we also see serum. So we're going to want to draw our rapid separator tube. That would be our orange thrombin tube. And with the um, the basic metabolic panel, you can either grab a light green or you can probably just get away with putting that basic metabolic panel in the same tube, the red or the, um, the orange thrombin tube, the same tube as the uh, serum hepatic panel. So you're also going to want to grab a lavender for your hematology and a light blue for your coagulation. Remembering our order of draws, we have sodium polyamethyl sulfonate for our blood cultures, sodium citrate for our coagulation, all of our clot activators, SST, RSTs, thrombin is next. Then we have lithium heparin, sodium heparin in our green tubes, EDTA or ethylene diamine tetracetic acid in our lavender, and sodium fluoride potassium oxalate in our gray tube. So next she's going to grab a couple gauze pads and lay them aside. One gauze pad is going to be when the needle first comes out of the arm, and the second gauze pad is going to be for under the band-aid after the bleeding has stopped. Then she's going to grab a band-aid. She's also going to grab an isopropyl pad. Then she'll move over and grab a needle and a tube holder. She's going to use a 22 gauge needle with a orange tube holder, and that's a swivel tube holder. So that's going to need to be activated on the tabletop, and we are ready for the patient. I'll just go ahead and grab my gloves. How are you liking this weather? It's pretty hot, huh? Oh my goodness. So you can see she's having a little bit of a hard time putting on her gloves. This can be easily remedied with a little bit of baby powder, which most labs have. If they don't have it, you can just bring it in there and apply it to your hands yeah. after you wash them. And this will help the gloves slide on a little bit easier. We're not happy that school has been out for so long and 
I'm not happy about it either. Making small talk with your patients is always a good idea. It helps to make them comfortable and it helps the blood drop to go much more easily and efficiently. Okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to go ahead and check for a vein so we can get the best one. Now, when we're doing our practical examination, all we're doing is setting the tourniquet down on Mr. Arms right at the appropriate spot. Untying it and tying it again repeatedly throughout the procedure can be a bit difficult, so just lying it there is fine. And next, we're going to be palpating for the veins. So we're going to be looking for the median cubital right there in the antecubital fossa. If we don't find a good vein here, we'll move laterally to the cephalic on the lateral side of the arm, if there's nothing there, at the worst case scenario, we can move medially to the basilic, but our favorite spot is that median cubital vein right there, dead center of the arm. This one feels really good right here. I'm going to go ahead and clean that off. Now she'll take the isopropyl pad right at the center of the draw site and work from the center outward in a centrifugal circle and then she's going to wait for that to dry. Meanwhile, she can set up her equipment and get everything prepared. So she'll screw her 22 gauge needle into the tube holder and just set that aside. And we're gonna go back and check if it's dry. We're not gonna touch it while it's drying, but it is dry, it takes about 30 seconds. So she'll reapply the tourniquet now and we are ready to go. So she'll remove the cap from the needle and inspect the needle. From time to time, you'll see some blemishes on the needle and that will cause a lot of pain to the patient. So get your anchor in, and hold it firmly until the needle is in the arm, usually about a quarter of an inch deep, and then as soon as the needle goes into the arm, you can release the anchor. Now your second anchor is the fingers that are holding the needle. Now you're ready for your tubes. You insert the tube, you use the flange on each side of the tube holder to insert the tube, and there's no blood because it's Mr. Arm, he doesn't have any blood, so we're just gonna pretend like it's filling up, we're going to remove the tube and set it aside. We're not going to do anything with it yet. We're going to get the next tube in there. And while that tube is filling, we're going to go ahead and invert the previous tube. So that sodium citrate is being inverted now while our thrombin is being filled. Now our thrombin is filled. We're going to remove that tube and set it aside just like we did the citrate. And we're going to grab our EDTA that's next, put that in there, and we're going to invert our thrombin tube. So we have a few seconds between each tube fill, so that's sufficient time to invert your tubes. And then we're gonna take out our EDTA and get our oxalate in there. Doing okay? And while our oxalate is filling, again, we're gonna invert our EDTA tube. Now, before we take the oxalate tube out, we're first gonna remove the tourniquet and set that aside. Now our oxalate tube can come out and we're going to avert it immediately so we don't forget to do it later on. We'll set the oxalate tube down Grab a gauze pad and we're going to hold it right next to the site. Pull the needle straight back and cover the site. Activate your safety device and ask the patient to hold pressure. Okay, have you hold pressure there for me? Thank you so much. As soon as the patient is holding pressure, the first thing that you do is immediately dispose of your sharps into a sharp container, never setting it down for even a second. Okay, Mr. Barnes, I'm going to go ahead and label your tubes. Always label the tubes right in front of the patient. Last name, first name, your date of birth, today's date, the time it was collected, and my initials. Now, Mr. Burns, can you go ahead and verify this information for me, please? Perfect, and I'm gonna go ahead and write it on all of these. Go ahead and keep holding pressure. Fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and double check, make sure you're not bleeding anymore. Wonderful, it looks like it's stopped. I'll put on a new gauze. Get you bandaged up and you are all set to go. Mr. Barnes, you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, and that was Mariah. She did a fantastic blood draw all the way through. That was our practical exam. If you ever have me as a teacher, you will have something very similar to this. Now, you can, again, use these techniques in the real world. You're going to adjust them once you really master your technique and 
fine tune your art. You're gonna be a great phlebotomist. Just follow these skills from the beginning and build on it and build on it and master it, but don't leave the fundamental and most important things out of it and you'll never have a problem drawing blood. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe or comment below. I'm gonna have a couple of really unique videos coming out on uh, palpating veins and other methods you can use in phlebotomy. So uh, give a like, thumbs up, or leave a comment, and see you soon.